studied about the origin and destiny of the soul to going on. Yes, sir. Now, and that was, actually we studied the whole chapter. We're going to start on page 238 in Thiessen's uh, Systematic Theology. It's talking about the fall of man, the anatomy. My, my title for this message is The Anatomy of the Fall. The anatomy of the fall. The anatomy of the fall. He starts out talking about the fall of man, and then he goes into the law of God. And then he goes into the doctrine of sin in all of this lesson. So we're going to look at some of this, and we're going to go to my book that I wrote, The Doctrines of of the Bible and we're going to study the doctrine of sin because he goes into that and and I like the way he says it except he gets a little Catholicism mixed up with a little bit of everything else here so we're going to evade some of the wrong issues and go to the right issues the fall of man the fall of man now I said to you earlier that Adam in the garden <clears throat> when he decided to sin when he decided to sin that's when he became a sinner before he ever took of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil when he decided to do that that's when he began to fall. That's when he began to fall, when he decided to do it. Now, <clears throat> the whole human race is created in Adam, is it not? The word Adam and the word anthropos, Adam is in Hebrew, Adam, and anthropos in Greek is for man. Uh, the word Adam really means it means of the earth of the earth related to the earth or earthy but as God uses it in the book of Genesis and let's go to the book of Genesis the first chapter come down in this country I get asthma all the time get, uh, <clears throat> I'm coughing and excuse me on the recordings for this asthma then God said let us make man in our image that word image there means shadow casting image and our blood flowing likeness. And then he says, let them have sovereignty over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all of the earth and every creeping thing, every little creeper that creeps upon the earth. And I said, God made man in his own image in the image of God. He created he, him, male and female. He created them. <coughs> And he uh, gave them everything upon the earth. Behold, I've given you every plant yielding seed that is in the, the face of the earth. It shall be food for you. To every beast of the earth and to every bird of the sky and everything that creeps and moves upon the earth which has life. And I've given you every plant for food and it was so. It became so, is what it actually says in Hebrew, and it became so. It became thus. And God said, <clears throat> saw all that he had made, and behold, it was tov. Tov, tov. Good, good. 
Tov, Tov, good, good. And there became evening and there became morning the sixth day. So he did, man was created in the sixth day, wasn't he? Now, he did give him something to do, didn't he? He said, guard the garden. God had planted this beautiful garden and he plant, placed him in Eden. And this was the second Eden, wasn't it? Was it? There was an Eden before that Lucifer was in. And Eden is always a throne room. <coughs> and the Lord God planted a garden toward the east of Eden. And he placed the man whom he informed. And out of the ground the Lord God caused to grow every tree. By the way, every tree was caused to grow out of the ground. Because the seed was already there, wasn't it? From the original creation in Genesis 1 and 1. Every tree that is pleasing to the sight and good for food, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divided and became four rivers. Uh, the name of the first is Pishon, and it flows around the whole land of Havilah, that means gold. And there is where there is gold, and the gold of the land is good, and the medallion and the onyx stone are there, and the name of the second river is Gihon, and it flows around the whole land of Cush. Cush now is basically what would become Egypt and Africa, the African continent. And the name of the third river, we know that river, don't we? Tigris. And it flows east out of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. So now we have the Tigris and Euphrates River. Now I want you to understand that the earth was not like it is today either, was it? Because the earth was Pangea. Or Godwana, whichever way you want to look. And that means all water and all land. and All water in one place and all land in the other place. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden and cultivated it to keep it. Now man was created outside of the garden, wasn't he? And he was placed in the garden. Now this is God's garden. But God has given man sovereignty over it, hasn't he? He's supposed to take care of it. And we find out in the second chapter, <clears throat> let's look at that in a few moments. And the Lord God commanded man, saying, From every tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat from it, you shall begin the process of dying. Then God said, it's not good for man to be alone. We have to give him some trouble. <laughs> Got to have trouble. Got to have opposition. Got to have uh, problems. <laughs> Keep him more busy. Good lady, Lord. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> he's going to find a helper corresponding to him corresponding to him. Two men and two women do not go together. I'm going to make a woman corresponding to him to his ever need. To fit with him. Then it says, And the man gave names to all of the cattle and to all the birds of the sky. And every beast filled, but for Adam there was not found a, a helper suitable for him. Now he looked upon all the animals and everything. All these animals were friends, weren't they? They were companions. But there was not a companion suitable for him. So the Lord God, Jehovah Elohim, caused a, a hypnose. In Greek it is. We got a word hypnotic, trance. He hypnotized Adam to fall upon the man, and he slept. He kept on being hypnotized and he took from his sides I don't care what it says in King Jim or anything else from the Hebrew it says it took from his sides plural Sharon now you had this with me am I telling the truth yes. Mar Marilyn have you seen where it took from his sides mm -hmm. not from one side now the King James people said well the rib is a side but if you translated it ribs it would be ribs not one rib I remember when I was going to church when I was very, very young. I went to this church, and <clears throat> they weren't much on the Bible. And they weren't much on science, and they weren't much on anything, but I did read the Bible, and I got saved there. <clears throat> and they told me, 
that a man had less ribs than a woman because God took a rib out of man. I used to believe that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what you heard, wasn't it? It's not true. It's funny because Melody and I we Googled that the other day. We were, and I was showing, I was talking, we were talking about that, and, I yeah. told, and so we Googled it. It's the same amount of ribs. That's right. Men and women. It's a lie. Yeah. It's a make believe. He did not take woman from a rib, did he? No. no. He took her from his sides, plural. Not ribs, but sides. And he said he took out of his sides and he closed up the fleshes instead or in place of her, where she was taken. And the word woman means what? Out of man, in every language. And Jehovah Elohim fashioned into a woman the sides which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. And the man said, Now this is bone of my bones and fleshes of my fleshes and bloods of my bloods. Literally. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And then he said, For this cause a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall become one flesh, one flesh, one flesh. And the man and the wife were both naked and were not ashamed. They were both naked and they weren't ashamed. They looked upon each other and they were naked, but they were not ashamed. They saw their corresponding part. Everything. <clears throat> but something happened. Something happened. Haya. Something happened. Something became. Now the serpent had become more crafty. That's the word there. It's not was. The serpent was not crafty. The serpent became crafty. Did God create anything reprobate? Did he create anything no. bad? No. no. And the serpent, the Nahash, was not bad. Now the serpent, Nahash... Hayah became more crafty than any beast of the field which Jehovah Elohim had made and he said to the woman indeed has God said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden now <clears throat> where's Adam sleeping on the job. where's Adam with a remote <laughs> with a remote <laughs> Watching the Rams and the Giants and whatever these things are called. You know, I never watched a football game in my life. Maybe the, the Brooklyn Dodgers and the New York Yankees. I don't know what he's watching. He's doing something. Saints. <coughs> now, he's supposed to be here. What is he supposed to guard the garden against? This. So he's laying down someplace. He's doing something else. Maybe he's talking to a giraffe or something. I don't know what he's doing. He's supposed to be guarding the garden. And the woman said to the Nahash, From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat. But from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God said you shall not eat from it or touch it lest you die. And I don't. a lot of people said she added to the word of God. They shouldn't have touched it either, should they? No. They should not have touched it because it wasn't theirs to touch, was it? Mm -hmm. And not theirs to touch. That is God's tree. And God put it there for a reason. Why did he put the tree in the garden? To test, test their obedience. Mm -hmm. That was a test. The test of their obedience. But from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God said, You shall not eat from it or touch it lest you die. And the serpent said to the Lord, No way. That's what he said, No way. Are you dying? Do you feel bad today? Have you had any palpitations? Have you ever sneezed? Have you ever coughed or anything? You know, have, Is anything wrong? Do you have asthma attack like that preacher up there right now? Do you have any signs of death and dying? Do 
you won't die. You won't die. For God knows in the day the eat from your eyes will be open. Your eyes will be open. Now, <clears throat> in this situation, was God hiding any knowledge from Adam and Eve? Good knowledge? Told? No. No. No good knowledge. Would they have learned everything that they ever needed to know? Had God taught everything, Adam about all the stars of heaven and all the botany and all of the biology of the whole earth? He wasn't lacking any knowledge. Brother Ray, do you wish that you had never known sin? Absolutely. Sharon, do you wish that you had never known sin? Now, Marilyn, I'm not going to ask you that because she said I don't. <laughs> Brother Vincent, <clears throat> do you wish that you had never known sin? Carol, we wish that we had never known sin. And we wouldn't have had to know sin. They didn't have to know sin. They didn't have to. The anatomy of the fall. The anatomy of the fall. When you study about when a doctor goes to school, you know one of the first things? I went to medical school for three years. You know what the first thing they told me about? Anatomy. How man is built. I read <coughs> a book that a doctor wrote back in the 1800s, The Splendor, The Splendor of God. And he studied anatomy when he was studying medicine. Now you have to realize that medical doctors didn't go to medical school back then. Did you know that? Yep. They studied. They were apprentices from another doctor. They went there. But as they would study about the human anatomy, he said, I can't believe that anybody would be an atheist and study about the human body. It is not a stroke of accident. It is a perfectly formed machine. Beautiful machine, anatomy. The anatomy of man, the anatomy of the fall, the anatomy of woman. You'll be like gods. You'll be like gods. You'll be like gods. Herbert Armstrong promised that. Garner Ted Armstrong promised that. The Mormon Church promises that. We talked about that at the dinner yesterday, didn't we, Maryland? The problem with the Mormons is God. They have a diminutive view of God. Because every Mormon man is a God. And there's one God that got a head start on him. God the Father. And then Adam. The God Adam. All of these got head starts on them. And they're trying to catch up. And a woman has no soul. So a woman cannot be resurrected without a man. Boy. You could tell that a man's been invented that one, now, Sharon. <laughs> Marilyn, wow. you, you two are always yeah. having problems with, with uh, what we call the feminine gender in the Bible. <laughs> Both of you. The women are put down, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, here we have the leader of the feminine gender here. And the woman saw, yeah, and you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. He lied the, to her. He lied to her. He deceived her. Yeah. She was deceived. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food. She was hungry, Marilyn. When you had that big wreck the other day, the first thing you wanted to do was go to <laughs> Carl Jr. That's crazy. The second thing she wanted to do was go to Jack's Waffle Shop. <laughs> you, you think you heard it all? Didn't bother her at all. The tree was good for food. Hungry. And it was uh, pretty. It was pretty. The girls like pretty things. Marilyn, you like pretty things? <coughs> Carol, you like pretty things? I see a little dolphins all around here. Pretty little forms of dolphins and things. Pretty little things. Pretty here and pretty there. Women like pretty things, don't they? That's yep. normal. Well, they look at, uh, look at us pretty men, don't they? 
And then we fail them because we start getting falling apart. It was a delight to the eyes, to the sight. It looked pretty. And the tree was desirable to make one wise. Pretty. And now I'm going to be real smart and wise. And she took from its fruit, and what does it say, Sharon? In Hebrew. She took from the fruit, she kept on taking from the fruit, and she kept on doing what else? Eating. She didn't stop with a taste. She ate. She ate. There. Yeah. It's in the imperfect tense, by the way. That means she keeps on doing it. And she kept on taking, she kept on eating. I don't know how much of that tree she ate before she gave some to Adam. Knowing <clears throat> maybe it tasted like chocolate, Mary. Chocolate. Whatever your pleasure. Eh? Whatever. Probably it tastes like. Make it look good. Probably tastes like vanilla ice cream. <laughs> and chocolate. And banana, hot fudge sundae, and banana splits. Told Marilyn the other day I would make her after she had that rack. I said I'll make you a banana split. She said I've been bad. I, I tore up your car, and I said it's all right. God loved you. I have to. <laughs> I have to honor him. Absolutely. Yeah. You see something like that happen, and she comes out there without a bruise or an ache or a pain or anything, you say, well, Lord, you loved her. I'll take care of her. You took her through that. I'll take care of her the best I can. And she took from his fruit, and she kept on eating, and then she gave also her husband with her, and he kept on eating. Kept on eating, kept on eating, kept on eating. Now what's left of the tree? Is the tree left? Is there any tree left? I think the fruit and the tree and the leaves and the limbs were masticated. Gluttons. Yeah, they were gluttons. The first case of glutton, gluttony. <laughs> And the eyes of them both were opened up. They knew that they had become evil. Arum, say arum. arum. They had become evil. They had become evil. They had become naked. They had become wicked. They had become liars. They had become thieves. They had become murderers. All of the wicked things, deceitful. And now they're going to try to deceive God. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to try to deceive God. Like the snake, like the, Hana, the Nahash deceived her, they will try to deceive God. And then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they had become naked. Not were, they had become naked. That's the change from one state, the change of a state of being clothed to a state of being naked. And the word naked means evil and wicked, deceitful, dishonest. And now they began their man-made religion. And they sewed fig leaves together and made aprons for themselves. Aprons. Brother Ray, you ever mess around in the fig orchard? Figs? Yeah, figs. You do the fig trees in yeah. the orchard. How about the leaves? You ever tried to sew them together and put britches on them? I'm not that smart. Fig leaves are like stinging nettles. They are. They are not good for you. The first job I ever got on Mr. and Mrs. Estes, Estes's orchard down there on Fairfax Road was to pick, fi pick, pick figs. Within one hour, I know that's not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I, my hands were burning. That sticking stuff was all over me. To go out and pick one fig and eat it. And I didn't, even, I didn't like figs to begin with. But I liked them a whole lot less after that. 
My mother loved figs. Marilyn loved figs. I don't like figs. Don't care anything about them at all. Fig jam. I, yeah, fig jam. <laughs> With sugar. <laughs> anything that's sweet. Let's look and see what happened. The anatomy of the fall. And they began to be self-made religious. They have their self-made, man-made religion here. They're going to cover themselves up. They're going to, they're going to deceive God, where He can't see through those fig leaves, you know. And see how they had become. Maybe they made fig leaf hats and fig leaf masks. All of this fig leaf business. They were naked. They had the evil a room. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Actually in the, the breeze of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Jehovah Elohim among the trees of the garden. Had they ever done this before? What happened now? that pristine spirit of God that was in them we didn't start out that way did we we started out with Adam's spirit mm -hmm. they had a spirit that had no guilt wonderful they had a spirit that was purity and they looked at each other and they loved each other and they loved all the little animals of the fields and everything and everybody was happy and everybody was just in harmony. And man was in harmony with God. And they heard the sound of God walking in the garden in the breeze of the day and the man and his wife hid themselves from the faces, literally, from the faces of the Lord God. Faces. Now, how many faces does God have? It's plural. Three. From the faces of the Lord God. Now, Brother Vincent, you look really relaxed right now. Now, could you give me a smile? Okay, that's, a di that's two different faces, isn't it? They were afraid to look on any expression of God's face. Because I'm sure they were going to have an upside-down smile that they were going to look at. They hid themselves from the faces of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And now God is omniscient, is omnipresent, and omnipowerful, isn't it? Now, <clears throat> the Lord God called to the man. And he said to him, Where are you? Where are you? I know he. Where are you? Did God know where he was? Now since man has become so smart, maybe he knows where he is. Hmm? Man has realized that he's lost and he's evil and he's wicked. And then Adam, the head of the human race, the head of the human race now, the sovereign being of the earth, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I became afraid because I had become naked. Now change all of this writing because that's the way it is in Hebrew, okay? It wasn't was. I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid. No, I became afraid. Because I became naked. So I hid myself. I became afraid he had never had fear in his life before, had he? Oh, what a miserable feeling. They're experiencing all of these wonderful things about good and evil, aren't they? But remember one thing, the knowledge of good and evil. Now, what is the knowledge of good and evil? What did they understand first, Brother Ray? Uh, how righteous God is. How righteous and pure and good God was. Mm -hmm. And then, we... Arum. We are room. And then how 
wicked they had become. How righteous and pure God was and how wicked they had become. So we hid, I hid myself. And then he said, I told, who told you that you were wicked, said God? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? Now we have what we call blame shifting. Blame shifting. Are you guilty of that today? Are you guilty of that? On the way up here, I said, Marilyn, where's my packet down here <laughs> that I have to turn in with this car? I don't know. <laughs> I said, I didn't move it. Went in there the other day of the house or something like that. So we're just go. I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it. <laughs> this is Adamic, Marilyn. It's Evic. <laughs> also, we do this. We, we do these things. Then the Lord God said to the woman, oh, wait, let's go back up. And the man said, the woman you gave to me, she gave to me and I ate. The woman made me do it. The woman made me do it. The woman made me do it. I want, to understand, I want you to understand something. It wasn't the woman's fault. Whose fault was it? Whose fault was all of this? Adam's. Adam's fault. The anatomy of the fall. Whose fault is it? It's Adam's fault. Because he was the head of the human family and he was the one that was supposed to protect his home. And his home was the Garden of Eden, the, the paradise and the treasure room and the throne room of the universe right there. He was supposed to protect it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And then she said, we know how she she on eat. And the serpent gave to me and I ate. She told the truth. But she was blame shifting also. She should have said, the serpent showed to me and deceived me and I just loved it. That's the best tasting stuff I ever tasted. And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Was she deceived? Yes, she was deceived. <clears throat> And the Lord God said to the serpent, Nahash, because you have done this, cursed are you above all the cattle. Now evidently, the serpent was the king of all the beasts. The head of all of the biological animals of the earth. Beautiful. I know snakes give people the creeps, don't they? But look how beautiful colors they have. And they're shining scales on them. Oh, they're beautiful, aren't they? Beautiful. Beautiful, but deadly. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this thing cursed, you are above all the cattle and over every beast of the field. And on your belly you shall walk. And dust you shall eat all the days of your life. And here is the most beautiful verse in the Bible. And I will put active hatred between you and the woman. Mr. Teeson, are you listening? Mr. Teeson, systematic theology. The woman does not have, is not able to pass on the sin nature. I'll put you and the woman. I'll put, I'll put active hatred between you and the woman. Between your seed, who's her? Who's his seed? Satan. All of those will he progenitate from the human race, and final, the finally the antichrist. But there are many antichrists that have been born already. Look at all the popes. Look at Muhammad, Joseph Smith, whether they're literal seeds of Satan or just adamically evil people. I do not know. Brother Vincent. So in here he was both talking to the serpent and to Satan. To, 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 serp to the serpent which was in uh, Satan was indwelling. The spirit of Satan was in him. Right. 
And he, was still and he loaned his body to him. Even after all of this, he's still in that serpent. Yeah, he's still in that serpent. That serpent has still loaned his body to him. Between you, your seed and her seed, that you, this woman's going to have the seed of the child, and we know now that the seed and the life comes from the man, not from the woman. The woman gives the, the child form. The spirit comes from the man, and they become a living soul like God when he breathed into Adam, the breathings of life. Isn't this beautiful? When you see the atomy, anatomy of the origin of the soul and the anatomy of the fall, the origin and destiny of the soul, and he shall bruise you as to the head, he shall deal you a death-dealing blow, and he's talking to Satan, isn't he? And you shall bruise him as to the heel. Now, I'm going to tell you something about snake killing. Brother Vincent, you've killed a snake or two in your life, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you shoot for their tail or their head? I shovel their head. Yes, right. <laughs> That's the deadly part, isn't it? Yeah, cut it off. Yeah. Bruce them as That's a death-dealing blow. Now, a long time ago, about 1981 or two, three, somewhere around there, I was up on my property in Fish Lake Valley, and my son Gary was up there with me. He's pretty young. And Gary and Jimmy and I used to go rattlesnake hunting up and down Breckenridge Road and kill a whole lot of rattlesnakes. And I'd catch snakes and take them home, turn them loose out in the barn and stuff. Gopher snakes, not rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes I dispatched. <laughs> but Gary and I were walking out across our property there in Maryland. You've been to that property. We walked off that direction. And we got out there past that house way out there, and all of a sudden I heard, I said, stand still, Gary. There's a rattlesnake real close to us someplace. And I just looked as far as I could and moved, and I heard this thing. Ch -ch 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 I said, there he is. He was in a bush. And we'd walked by that bush. So I began, and I was really fast back then. Brother Ray, you remember when I was quick? Yep. That was a half a century ago. But I went out there, and I'd go like this, and I'd kick at that rattlesnake. And I get him to stand up, get him to come up and strike at me, and I was going to shoot his head off because I was going to cook him. And I didn't want him biting himself. They'll bite themselves sometimes when you shoot them. I shot him, and G Gary was crying, Dad, Dad, you're going to get killed. I said, Gary, this is another rattlesnake. Yeah, Dad. Well, we're out here away from everybody and, and town's a long way off and if you get bit or something, you'll die, Dad. I said, don't worry, son. Kicking at him. Get him. I said, I'm going to get him to stand up. Yeah, I got him up there and I shot his head off. Took him down there and we skinned him and kept his hide and all that stuff and we cooked him and ate him. That rattlesnake. Well, I kind of deceived the snake. I acted like I was going to kick him so he'd come up. And I got his head out there and I shot his head off. Like that. And Gary, I never saw Gary afraid of a rattlesnake before that. He was always, we had him on the road. We were killing him right off the road or something. But here, one time we were up in the mountains up there cutting firewood. And my nephew, Willie, come a bouncing down through there. And he jumped over this cow patty. It was about that big. One of the cow patty was a rattlesnake. And we were eating just below that rattlesnake. He looked like a cow patty. And it was a timber rattler six foot long. Big body like this. Big snakes. Big bodies. And they're dangerous. This snake here was dangerous. He wasn't dangerous before, was he? But he had become dangerous when he's let Satan come in this body. Now spirits, we call spirits, they seek to dwell in what? Animal. Human or animal flesh. Mm -hmm. And this serpent had allowed Satan to come, his spirit come into them. Now Satan is a cherub, isn't he? He's an angel. But his spirit 
You know, I remember I said, angels are triune. You know, his spirit went in there. What entered Judas when he went out and betrayed Jesus? The spirit of Satan. What entered Peter or influenced Peter, not entered him, but influenced Peter when he tried to stop the Lord from saying that he was going to die on the cross of Calvary? Lucifer, Satan did. His spirit. Now let's go on. I will put active hatred between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, and he shall bruise you as to the head, and you shall bruise him as to the heel. Did Jesus Christ suffer on the cross of Calvary? Yes. Yeah. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In all of the act of childbirth, when a woman first comes to, well, the man and a woman first come together, she has pain. She has pain. She has pain. That's part of this curse. That's part of this curse. I will greatly multiply your pain in bearing children. And in pain you shall bring forth children. And your desire shall be for your husband. And he shall rule over you. Your desire shall be for your husband. Now the normal woman really loves her husband and she is very protective of him to some extent is she or is she not normally that's what you should have seen from your mother that she, that she loved your, her, your father and that loved him and wanted to protect him and take care of him your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you now that's the hardest thing, isn't it? For the woman to relinquish the rule of the home to the husband, isn't it? Isn't that hard? Is it hard? But if he does it right, it's pleasant. Amen. You have to make it pleasant. Then Adam said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, the anatomy of the fall, remember? And you have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat from her, or from him, that is. Cursed is the ground because of you. And I tell you what, these foxtails are going to come out, these goat heads are going to come out, and these uh, stinging nettles are going to come out, sand burrs, cockaburrs, goat heads, all that's going to happen real soon in the springtime here. And that's all because of what Adam did. Maybe there were thorns, or they were roses back then without thorns. Roses without thorns. Maybe the little goat heads with the little pretty flowers on them, the little yellow flowers on them, maybe they did not ever have thorns. And the uh, beautiful grass that becomes foxtails, which I'm very allergic to, those little stickers in them would never get in your cat's eyes, your dog's ears, or in your socks or anything. The curse is the ground because of you, and in toil you shall eat from it. In toil you shall eat from it. All the days of your life, and still man is not given an animal to eat, is he? Thorns and thistles, it shall grow for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field, and by the sweat of your nostrils you shall eat bread until you go to the ground because from the same source you were taken and to dust you shall become now the woman called his name Eve because she was a mother of all dying maybe he should have called her Meot Meot means dying but he looks to her because she is a mother of all living because she is going to bring forth the Messiah and the Lord God made garments for the skin, for, of skin for Adam and for his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, a man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. Now lest he stretch out his hand and live in a state of sin forever and take from the tree of life and eat and live forever. 
Therefore the Lord God sent out from the sent him out from the garden of Eden. No longer was he in the throne room. Who had gained the throne room of Adam of, of our Eden again? Satan. Again. To cultivate the ground. So he drove the man out and at the east of the garden of Eden and he stationed a cherubim. Cherubim are plural, by the way. At least two of them. And a flaming sword which turned every action to guard the way to the tree of life. And now we know where the tree of life is now, don't we? Where is it? In heaven. Now, we didn't even get into the book yet, did we? But the anatomy of the fall was what? What was the anatomy of the fall? When, when, when Adam came back, finally got on the ball and went back into the play, in presence of his wife, does, a, does, does the sin nature of the woman pass on to the child? No. Did he have to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Did he have to eat from it? No, he didn't have to. He could have still been his wife, been with his wife, but guess what? He didn't choose to do that. This is what we call a predetermined fall. And man's part, Adam's part. A woman's part, she was deceived. But she can't pass on the sin nature. And then he ate. And they both became naked and wicked. Both became naked and wicked. Do you have any questions from this so far? Do you have any questions? I hope you learned something from this. We're going to go back into the book and we're going to see some things we have to just leave there. <laughs> okay? And then we're going to go into uh, the doctrine of sin and the law of God. The doctrine of sin and the law of God. I didn't know how far I would get with this. All right. Any questions? No questions? Brother Vincent, do you have an invitation for us? 558. <clears throat> now, all of you here and all of you out there know that you're sinners, don't you? Is sin, does sin dwell in your body? Oh, yes, it does. It sticks close to our soul and to our skin, doesn't it? But what do we have? We have an offering of a gracious offering calling us back to God that we can come to Him and we can believe in that sacrifice that He has given to us. And we can have everlasting life and everlasting fellowship one day with Him forever and ever and ever. And even fellowship with Him here, can't we now? But it has to be by the shedding of blood, by the shedding of Jesus' blood. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the fruit gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you will confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and the God of the universe and believe in your heart that God raised him to the dead, you shall be saved. You shall have everlasting life right now. And you can do that wherever you are. Other exit. out in your name for your honor for your glory and if one out there someplace in the world will surrender their all surrender their will to you that they can have eternal life not that we become perfect only in your sight are we ever perfect when you see the blood of Jesus on us but that we still live in this world contaminated with the evil and the sin that that Adam brought into this world 
but that we have victory through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Father, forgive us for we found you. Help those out there to see the light and the life that you can give them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.